Ah, uh, yes, it is crunch time, baby. And of course, the high school football season is a full swing game. We got a, a bunch of games that we just had. We got games on Friday night. We got a bunch of Saturday. We've got a Sunday game to talk all about. This is, of course, Captain Crunch himself, the Crunch publisher, Carl York. What is up, Big Carl? Hey, how you doing, Jermaine? Things good here. Games, games, games. Good deal. Uh, I guess, obviously, uh, we can talk about this game real quick. And, and you look at, you know, uh, you got a game you're going to right now to cover. Glenver at uh, Stewart's draft. Right. It's interesting. Glenver's schedule has changed more than the Magna, Car Magna Carta. As it's <laughs> First, it was the county schedule, then no county schedule. Now, back to a county schedule and still scrambling to get games. I mean, uh, obviously, it's been a roller coaster ride for, um, you know, Coach Clifford and the Highlanders. Yeah, you know, it's tough for all these coaches. You know, when you talk to them after their early games, they're like, I don't know what I've got. I mean, we haven't had any scrimmages. We've only had a few practices. Uh, it's really tough to know what you've got. And uh, so uh, they're doing a great job out there. The kids are doing a great job, but it's just not the normal preparation that they're used to. Yeah, obviously, we've, we've had a lot of games. Uh, what games did you go to this week and what stood out to you so far? Well, we went to uh, Pulaski at Cave Spring on Monday. And then on Tuesday, we took in Hidden Valley Patrick Henry over at Patrick Henry. And then um, last night, we saw another good game, uh, LCA at Brookville over in Lynchburg. Uh, so I I'm amazed at how, actually, how well they're playing. I know the coaches are a little disappointed in maybe like special teams and some things like that that they haven't really had a lot of time to spend on those particular areas. But um, I'm amazed at how well, you know, the tackling's been pretty good. Uh, the uh, running the offense, not a lot of penalties. Um, I think they get a little frustrated sometimes, the coaches and the kids, when they're not as uh, in tune with each other. But that comes with playing with each other. That comes with learning, you know, each other and how they, you know, how they block, how they tackle, how they, how they run the plays. And, and, and a lot of football's timing. So, uh, but I've been, I've been impressed with just um, how well they've played, the teams that I've seen. You know, it's interesting. You, you mentioned uh, the game that you were at last night, which was LCA and Brookville. And I tell you what, I think you, from our video highlights, I mean, you were kind of in the same spot where uh, David de Guzman was shooting. And talk about that play. We're talking about uh, the Butler did it, uh, Tayshawn Butler. Uh, the one, and we, I calculated it. I think he was five yards deep in the end zone. It was 105 yard interception return the other way to wrap it up. LCA was driving down the field in the red zone, and then probably a thing if you throw it in the end zone. But it seemed like that Butler was thinking about, okay, should I run it out? So he ran it out, and 105 yards later, it's a pick six. Yeah, it was actually 108 yards. We asked the coach later, and we we checked the book. It was 108 yards, and uh, it was interesting because I was on the other side of the field when I was I was shooting with a camera and and uh, watching it, and it looked like it was going to be a touchdown. <laughs> the guy was open in the front of the end zone. It was a little high, and it got through his hands, and, uh, you know, the D-back was in the back of the end zone and made a great catch on it, but what was funny was, you know, he caught it, and a lot of, and this was the last play of the first half, so uh, the last, you know, a lot of guys would just take a knee, but he took off, and, uh, you know, it was funny, we were talking about today, uh, there were actually guys that had a couple chances to tackle him because he zigzagged up the field so much. If you hustled, if you missed him once and you hustled, you might get another shot, but nobody could touch him. So he, he went 108 yards, and uh, that was a big turning point. I mean, that, you know, LCA was getting ready to put up another touchdown on the board, and, and it flipped on him. And when he scored, there was no time on the clock. So those plays are always fun. If you get him down, if somebody can knock him out of bounds or get him down, it's, there, there's no more time for any plays. But he made it all the way to Pater. And then, you know, circling back what you said earlier, you said the coaches, uh, you know, feel like they – and every coach is going to say they have to work on things. But I thought overall the play so far – and we saw a bunch of games coming up. We have games tonight. We have games Friday. We even have a Sunday game <laughs> with Patrick Henry taking yeah. off Blacksburg, which – Basically, it's kind of like the NFL during COVID. I think they played every day in the NFL, but the only day we haven't had a game on Wednesday, but stay tuned, we might have that. But <laughs> you, I thought overall, from my perspective, if, if I could insert these games, say, in a normal year and put them, say, around second or third week of the season, I thought overall the play has been pretty good considering the fact they haven't – usually you're going to have some scrimmages. You're going to have things like that. 
But these these teams are just hitting the ground running. And I thought overall, from what I've seen, they have really played well. I agree. I mean, uh, you know, it, without much preparation, you, you would think there'd be a lot more mistakes. You'd think there'd be a lot more penalties. Uh, you think there would be a lot more missed tackles. You know, all the things that you work on over and over again uh, to get down during game time. And, and that's not what we, we've seen. We've seen uh, good tackling. We've seen good hitting. Um, you know, occasionally there's some missed timing on passes, um, that kind of thing. You know, maybe a missed block. But, you know, you expect that in a normal season. Um, but I agree with you. I think that um, I think that the kids have done a great job. The coaches have done a great job. Now the coaches are, I think, a little frustrated because they're used to getting a lot of reps, and uh, you know that's how they drill into their teams. You know what to do and and to get the timing down. And I think it's a little frustrating for them, especially with special teams. If you watch these early games, special teams are really playing, you know, a critical factor in who's winning. Uh, so that that's that's interesting. One other thing I want to bring up, and uh, obviously uh, you talk about another coach that's probably a little frustrated with scheduling, is uh, William Fleming's Jamara Lovelace. I mean, uh, again, they were supposed to play Harrisonburg tomorrow, but uh, from what I'm hearing, you know, what they're saying is like Harrisonburg really wasn't ready. They haven't had enough practices, but I look at it like this. Everybody's probably in the same boat. But anyway, that's not here nor there, but they lost a game and they were scrambling to get a game. And it looks like now this could impact playoff seeding because remember, we talked about this last week. We talked about how every game is important. And, you know, when you're looking at a team that's played six games versus a team that's played five, that could factor when you only have only four playoff spots in each region. So, and, and looking at Fleming's schedule, I don't know where they could get another game because everybody's playing the district schedule or there's, they don't have enough to get there. So, I'm sure Coach Lovelace is still scrambling, but just your feelings about that, because I know that has to be so tough when you're – even if they go 5-0, and oh, they, in some squirrely way, they might not still get into the playoffs. Yeah, I don't think that's right. I mean, uh, you know, uh, this is a pandemic season, a spring season. There's so many things that are different this season. They've got to figure out a way not to punish teams that have made a valiant effort to get six games and not just not been able to schedule it. They've got to figure out a way not – to penalize them. This isn't a normal year. This isn't where you, you go back and you look at points, I think, and, and try to figure out, you know, how to eliminate people. I think in this year, with all the efforts that have been made, I think you got to figure out, you know, a fair way to, to determine who's going to play in the postseason. And it can't be because, you know, one of your games got lopped off because another team didn't want to play. It's just, that's just not, that wouldn't be right. So, and I'm not, I'm not sure what the answer is. Jermaine, but, um, but, but they can't do it that way. I mean, well, there were maybe it was talk of Harrisonburg giving them a for having that game count as a forfeit, because if you remember a few years ago, it was uh, Salem was uh, going up against Carroll County. And you remember that circumstance where I think that game was canceled or something like that. And it factored into the points. So, and I think how it ended up, Salem only got credit for nine games and a lot of teams got play credit for 10. So it didn't count as a forfeit with the Carroll Carroll County didn't forfeit the game. They just, they couldn't play the game. So obviously if you call it a forfeit, that might penalize Carroll County and Carroll County, which by the way, congratulations on their comeback win over Floyd. That was a big comeback they had on uh, Monday night. But back then that was a tough situation because when you look at it, that actually, and I think it did impact the the ratings. I mean, it didn't impact whether Salem was going to get into the playoffs, but where your seed is. I think I think Jefferson Force outpointed them, but you know Salem ended up knocking off Jefferson Force because of that. But in the, in the playoffs, but it, it's just so important. I mean, the VHS has got to look at this and they got to figure out what they're trying to do because it is a tough situation to figure out the playoffs. And you know, I know you're short on time, so I'm gonna you know throw two more quick questions. Number one, your thoughts about Sunday high school football, Patrick uh-huh. playing Blacksburg. But you, and, and, and probably the reason is because you have teams that are using, you know, Blacksburg's got a new turf field, Christopher got a turf field, so teams in, that, you know, in the county are using, in, in Montgomery County, are using those turf fields, so that's the aspect. But just your thoughts about actually playing at Blacksburg. It's a Sunday game, and as you get to that point, at this point of the season, some teams are only going to play one game, some have already played two. Yeah, so again, they're trying to scramble around and make sure they get the games in. And a Sunday game, I don't think we've had a Sunday game, at least around here, since Salem had to play their state championship on a Sunday. 
uh, because of weather. Uh, and that was interesting. They moved on five. If I remember right, they moved it forward, uh, which, you know, uh, was interesting. But, um, yeah, you know, it's, it's just so rare to have a Sunday game, especially in this part of the country, especially in high school. Uh, normally that's reserved, like you say, you know, during the fall for NFL and, and maybe even some college. So, um, yeah, so, Sunday's, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, and, and I think uh, with, uh, with PH especially, you know, uh, Coach Fiddler, I mean, he had a physical game with Hidden Valley uh, on Tuesday night. So, you know, the more days they can get to recover and recuperate and try to get fresh, uh, the better off they are. So um, I, I know he didn't want to play it on Saturday, and, and, and I'm not sure if Saturday was an option, but uh, even one extra day of rest and relaxation and trying to recoup uh, is worth a lot. So, uh, yeah, it's just it's unusual times. I think you throw everything out the window. And then next Friday, they're, they're going to have a short week to get ready for the Salem Spartans because that'll be next Friday. So, you know, in Salem, uh, they'll play Christiansburg down there on Saturday. So, you know, it's it's a jumble. I mean, everybody's got to deal with it and all that. But uh, interesting times, Mr. Carl York. Anything else you, know, you want to throw in or add? Or uh, you got your – talk about your radio show. You got that tomorrow, right? Yeah, radio starts tomorrow at 10, 10 to 11 on WPLY. We're excited about that. Uh, just a couple observations, too. You know, in the games – or at the games when you're there, obviously there's no fans that the media is there. If they can, you know, a certain amount of media is allowed in. And, uh, but the weird thing is the feel of it, you know, it feels like fall, but it's got this hint of, you know, like the end of fall, like, you know, the warmer days are coming. So it's a real strange feeling to the football games out there, just the weather. And then the other thing I've noticed, which I think is kind of interesting is the games that I've been to, depending on the venue, um, they won't let the fans in uh, because of the mandates, but we're getting a lot of fans, groups, groups of kids and stuff outside the gates cheering their, cheering their teams on. So you hear these roars and you hear this cheering from the other side of the gates. And I think they're trying to stay socially distant or whatever, but they really miss high school football. They really want to see their schools play. And it's not just kids, it's parents. It's, you know, so uh, when you get to a venue, uh, Jermaine, make sure you check out the the, the gaps where uh, fans might stand because you're probably going to see them in there uh, looking to try to catch a glimpse of their football team. I was at the uh, the Salem uh, Blacksburg game, and I mean Salem, I mean they won that big uh, fifty to nothing, which was a surprising score because considering the history of those two teams, they play some tight ones. So it, it was interesting to see that. But yeah, I mean when you go out there, it just it's it's a weird feel and everyone's got different rules Seminole district they're not letting visitors visiting uh, fans come in and they're divvying up the tickets depending on the school and you know i think the biggest thing is and i've called the governor's office haven't got a definitive answer but i'd like to know what is why is high schools considered recreational sports because I, that 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 doesn't i don't understand it i mean because if you're going to open up the outdoor venues which for concerts and all that I mean, the high school should get that consideration of being, okay, you got to loosen that up. I don't know what there's an answer is, but I'm, I'm sure that uh, they'll have to figure that out. But yes, your thoughts about that? I mean, rec I mean, high school is considered recreational sports. Yeah, that's unusual. I mean, you would think since it's outdoor that uh, they could manage, uh, you know, keeping people socially distant up in the, fan up in the stands and, and let people enjoy, at least some people, at least the, the parents enjoy watching their kids play and, and being safe out there. I, I, you know, but the, but the interesting thing is, you know, they're watching it anyway. So they're going outside the fence and they're standing and watching and cheering. And it's just an odd time to hear the crowd outside the venue cheering. It's just an unusual thing. Um, but that they, they want to root their kids on and they want to see it live. And, uh, you know, I hope they can figure out a way to, to let more people in soon because, uh, you know, this is a quick season. It's six regular season games and it's four playoff weeks and it'll be done. And um, before you know it, we'll be talking about fall season. So, uh, but these kids, you don't want to rob these kids, the seniors this year, of what season they get. And, and it's, it's not long, but, uh, but they are happy to be playing. Yeah, so WFXR is Friday Night Blitz presenting Crunch Time on WFXRTV.com. And uh, so one final question. I mean, again, your radio show, WPLY, that's from 10 to 11 on WPLY. And, of course, you have your segment 
on Greg Roberts Live with Greg, Randy, and uh, Doug, and uh, Chuck over there. You guys do a great job with that. But also another thing, too, uh, the Crunch Publications um, and online. Give us a little background and feedback on that and, and how, how you're getting that out as far as the, the publication. Any differences from last year to this year and the online version? Yeah, the yeah. online version is exciting. I mean, it's uh, the way we're doing it. It's a little bit smaller publication this year. And what we're going to do is turn people uh, for more information online so we can make it a little more affordable. Uh, but, but it'll be the same great crunch publication, uh, great four color, uh, nice photography. Uh, it'll be a little more of a tease to, to go online and, and check out, you know, everything that we've got to offer. But, but online offers you, you know, we're going to have interviews. You're going to be able to hear the kids uh, when we interview them a little bit. And the coaches have great comments. There's nothing like hearing the actual coach you know, and seeing him saying what he's saying, you know, you can write it and, and, and get close, but when you, you see the intensity or you see the emotions on the coaches and the kids, it, it makes it special. So we're excited about going online. Uh, we, we've got a lot of uh, new stuff on there. You just have to check it out. I mean, uh, we're uh, <laughs> next week is when it launches. So, uh, um, you know, this week we've, uh, we we're, we're planning on, we're right in the middle. We're planning on covering seven games. So uh, there's, Three games, obviously, our Lynchburg Roanoke and our New River Valley game of the week. And then the other four games will be bonus games with, um, with covers and, and pictures and, and a little recaps. It's going to be really cool. I, I think people are really going to like it. That's good stuff. And, of course, our crunch publications or crunch segments, crunch time segments are right here. They'll, you, you'll provide a link to get to this segment. So we appreciate you doing that. And, and you know, like I said, our, our partnership with uh, Crunch Publications has been awesome in the last few years. It's always a joy. You're like family to me, sir. And uh, I, I appreciate you. And I'm glad that it's growing. You know, you're, what you're doing now, going the online route and the print and all that, the radio, the TV, all that. So you are being the man 100%. <laughs> well, I tell you what, your main event makes it special for us. Uh, you know, I don't know if people know your nickname. We call you Jermaine Event over at Crunch because you are the main event. And, uh, you know, we appreciate you being on the radio with us when we can get you. We know you're a busy man. And uh, it's, it's just a, a lot of fun what we do. You know, we're, we feel honored to be able to do it. And it uh, keeps us uh, feeling young and being around the young folks and, and, you know, loving on a sport we really like and loving on all the sports. Uh, but we're, we're having a good time doing it. We appreciate your, your kind words. Good deal. Well, guess what? We're going to put a bow because Carl's got to get to the road and go to Stewart's Trap to cover Glenver and Stewart's Trap. That should be a fun game up there. So, Carl, again, thank you so much for being on Crunch Time presented to you by WFSR Sports Friday Night Blitz. Thank you, buddy. All right. And again, you can catch all the action here on WFXRTV.com with Carl York on high school coverage. Of course, we'll have Friday Night Blitz tonight at 11. Catch Crunch Time tomorrow at 10 on WPOY Radio. And, of course, what's the website so people can go and see your good stuff again? It's crunchhsports.com. So it's crunch and then HS, which is short for high schools, and then sports. So crunchhsports.com. And it won't be up till next week. Right now we still uh, have some basketball up there right now from the basketball season, which is cool. Got to check that out, too. Uh, but uh, next week it'll it'll launch. All right, sir. Well, we again appreciate you and safe travels up to Stewart's Draft, Carl. Thank you, buddy. Have a good week. <laughs>